something. Do you? <laughs> yeah, I'm a little Napoleon. He's a little Napoleon, right? <laughs> Welcome the guys to Headbangers Ball on MTV Europe for the first time. So, uh, hi guys, welcome. Hi. hi. Hey, where's Ricky Rockman anyway? Who do you think you are? Ricky Rachmanov, Boris Berdnoff, <laughs> and Natasha. Okay, now uh, in just about a year, you guys have gone from kind of like the underground stage to the, like the world stage. Uh, have you had any time to enjoy your success? Well, all the world's There's a nothing, stage, and misery we're and heartache. <laughs> Only pain, suffering, and death. I wish I just would have blown my head off and gone straight to hell. I know, that's so right. Just, that's no, but seriously, you've been on tour a lot, and uh, that's a very grueling routine. Um, we don't tour that much anymore. We take it easy now. We wear the pants in this family. And we wear the skirt in this family, because I came from a family with a really dominant mother. <laughs> hey, now, heavy metal boys. <laughs> shave your head and wear a dress. Do you ever feel now that you're suffering from the kind of Guns N' Roses syndrome where people want to take uh, more interest in like the gossip and the hype surrounding you rather than the music? That is just so bad. I mean, Rona Barrett, I mean, remember her? She was a big writer for like uh, the Weekly World News or oh, something yeah. like that. Gossip. Oh, what, it was it just in America though? I think it was just in America, yeah. And you know, that's like the Merv Griffith syndrome, right? I mean... Jeepers Creepers. I don't know, that's just like soap opera, right? That's just like the days of our lives, the days of Nirvana. You know, Dave, but I mean, I'm going to have to leave you because <laughs> I'm going out with Kurt now. <laughs> and that, that's really happening in this band. That's some dirt on this band. It's also good to have a dialogue sparked up, but the you know, be some kind of leader or something like leaders really suck and ideologies really suck. I mean, you have to be responsible for yourself and long-winded, <laughs> what is it, diatribe or whatever, I don't know. Now we've got the uh, video, for the new video for, for Lithium on the way. Um, how much do you think that, that video has contributed to your success? The Lithium video? No, just video in general. Oh. 
a lot in a lot in the states because MTV is a really big popular thing in the states. I, I realize that it's not that popular in, in Europe, but um, it has a lot to do with um, making or breaking a band in the states. So I mean, all your videos, you know, everything to MTV in the states. That's right. All your videos have been really different and uh, not a, not a cliche in sight, really. Um, that is a medium that's difficult for a band to have control over because you don't really, you know, your your the video is in the hands of the director kind of thing. Not Do with you? Being around. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little Napoleon. He's a little Napoleon, right? <laughs> so they really come out as per you wanted them to represent the song kind of thing. Well, yeah, it's I mean, not with Chris Novoselic around. That's right. <laughs> as I stomp my foot on the ground, asserted, assertingly, and raise a lot of dust. I stomp the ground like a rooster, and I peck the ground like a chicken. Yes, this is, this is very serious stuff. And very quickly, um, you know, you've done a lot of uh, touring, you've seen lots of different parts of the world and lots of different cultures. Do you think that that may have some effects uh, on your songwriting in the future, that you've absorbed some more influences kind of thing? Maybe, maybe not. Yes, no, maybe so. I don't know. I'm all confused. You're poor, you don't know it. Hey, it's yeah. nice to see the world. I don't know, I mean, yeah. We've, got, we've been sure. to so many places and seen a lot. You know, we were like in West West Belfast the other day, and that was really wild. Singapore. That was one of the best shows we've ever had in Belfast. Yeah. This is amazing. The, the reception was incredible. Are you able to write on the road, or is it something that you'd rather have a break after a tour and then go back to writing? Uh, we hardly ever write on tour. Hardly ever. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. It's been most interesting. And uh, right now. Good morning. Good morning to you. Is it morning for you now? Hello. My Hi. name is Keenan. Hi, Keenan. Hello. Hi, Kurt. Hi, Kurt. I hardly recognized you because you had a haircut since I've seen you last. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's summertime. I like to shed my skin in the summer. Why don't you shave it all then? I don't know. I really don't know. So I'm have you not been... into sculpting my head like a, like a hedge. <laughs> like Fred said Fred. Fred right said Fred. <laughs> <laughs> so are you, you've been sleeping until now? I've slept all day. Yeah, I was, I was up very late last night with my friend Roddy Bottom from Faith No War. He was showing me some new keyboard maneuvers. Rumor in uh, in Europe that Kurt from Nirvana is dead. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Again, dead, pregnant, on on heroin. I'm a hermaphrodite as well. <laughs> <laughs> what about the heroin rumor? You mentioned it yourself, Kurt. No, thank you. I'd rather have bare aspirin. <laughs> aspirin? Yeah. Prefer aspirin. Yes. Okay. Aspirin and Evian water. I was just kind of a little scene and. Just saw it. all the people who just kind of didn't fit in and liked punk rock music kind of congregated and we just have our parties and we wore like thrift store clothes and, and, and we're just in our own thing and that's when we, we discovered punk rock and I know I, that's when I discovered that there's like nothing wrong with me it was a majority of the people in town there was something wrong with them they were like really closed minded and, and, and I just, didn't, I just did not, could not get along with them. You know, they were just so rigid in their perspective. They just had just totally closed minds. It was stuffy. So all stuffy. three of you, all three of you, uh, are the ones who uh, the other kids don't want, didn't want to play with. Basically. Or was yeah, forbidden by the parents. Or? Well, well, um, we didn't want to play with those kids either. Yeah, you know, really. We could have if we wanted to, if we wanted to but it was know, impossible. stay well groomed. But it was impossible because we had a different perspective than them. And a lot of times we would meet somebody and like try to turn them on and like, hey man, here's this is the Dead Kennedys or this is Black Flag. And they're just like, ooh, you're weird. Or, or they, they were so close-minded, we were just dismissed as freaks, you know?
First of all, guys, I want to thank you for bringing rock and roll back into the world. I mean, oh, shucks. <laughs> or, or at least into the charts. Because I think that's a great mission, actually. It is, huh? Yeah. Well, we'd, re we'd reveal more of our mission, but we had to um, eat the tape that, <laughs> that the mission was given to us on. It, or it, it was either eat it, you know, this mission will, this recording will self-destruct in 10 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> no, but actually, oh, look at that. People are swimming here with their clothes on. Their clothes on. <laughs> idiots. Crazy idiots. idiots. <laughs> But what you have done is, is uh, no less, I think, than throwing a bomb into the whole music business, don't think you think? so? Yeah. I wish yeah. we would have thrown a bomb in the music business and they all would have been at least dismembered. But I don't know, it was more like a firecracker, ladyfinger. <laughs> yeah. Pop, you know, that's about it. I mean, a small snap of the finger. That's right, right, exactly. Um, is that, you mean, from your point of view? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, if you just look at it, I mean, we just kind of came into this thing with really high ideals, but now it seems like a lot of the garbage is proliferating, and so we've got more of a jaded perspective on things. What we're doing is nothing new, it's just that our you band know, happened to m penetrate into the mainstream. Yeah, so mainstream kids now are, are realizing the fact that they can start bands. Yeah. I think that's very good. It's very nice and flattering that we've we we helped aid something like that. But um, I don't know. That idea has always been around in in the underground, and to me, it seems kind of um, too. It seems really sad that so many people have a hard time finding small record shops or underground or independent type of music, where in every city there's at least two or three of those kind of shops. Mm. And it doesn't seem to me to be that hard of a thing to find, you know? Mm. But some people are so, I don't know, narrow-minded or just unaware to where they need to be, they need something like someone as accessible as us to be thrown into their faces to where they uh, realize that there are small record shops and independent labels of people doing things on their own. And, so oh, uh, maybe that's the most important thing then with, with the whole Nirvana thing, as it is called, that uh, you actually give people the chance to find other, other bands, you know, finding those record shops and stuff. Well, yeah, just um, in like interviews, just naming names of bands. So maybe somebody could be watching. So I never heard of that band. Maybe I'll go check them out. Yeah. Like bringing a Teenage Fan Club on tour with you now? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You've been on tour with like Sean and I. It's, it's as simple as this. Go to your telephone directory, look into the pages where it says record shops, call up all the record shops and ask, do you sell independent music? Do you sell independent records? And then find the address. If they say yes, go to the shop find fanzines and there are all kinds of little distribution I mean there, there are distributions of little fanzines and, and magazines that are homemade by kids who are fans why which is why they're called fanzines mm. and then they can find out about all this kind of music it's really simple Th they really shouldn't need bands like us to tell them about things like that it, it's a it's a really simple thing to do do you think that the hysteria around now is a bit, uh, a bit ridiculous I don't know, I don't really pay a lot of attention to it. I mean, what do you, you know, hysteria. Uh, we got a lot of attention, you know what I mean? A lot of, like, teen spirit was kind of played into the ground, kind of made me feel a little self-conscious, you know? Um, what do you guys think of hysteria? Oh, it's a load of shit. I think, I think there are at least 10 to 15 other bands who are just as good if, if not better than us and they deserve just as much attention as we do if they choose to take that attention if they want it you know but um, I think the reason that we've become so popular is because we were on a major label and we were exposed we had we had the tools and, and the access to the mainstream in order to, to, to expose ourselves to the mainstream yeah because I mean if you've been following American 
independent or, or alternative music for a while. I mean, there's, from the mid '80s, there have been loads of really, really, really good bands like Sonic Youth, and better bands, and Battle really Surfers, really, and yeah. Pixies, and all of these guys. And and there was always been really good, substantial stuff underneath the surface ever, ever since the '60s. You know, yeah. and just for some reason, I don't know if it was some conspiracy, or or it might be just that labels invest money in some crap and they just want their money back, and so they just shove this down the throats of the mainstream, mm. or they've like read some demographic survey says that you know people want more disco or whatever, and they <laughs> say give more disco, and then people are given disco or whatever. And then they say in the survey that they want disco. It's like it's just like a vicious circle. So. Yeah, it's the same thing with the hippies. It's like the hippies started out in San Francisco with a small group of people, and by 1967, the people who started the hippie movement denounced the hippie movement by the time before it became commercialized. Because I, I, I and I feel the same way with underground music. Once it gets commercialized, it it really doesn't matter because they're by the time that all the hippies it's not underground anymore, that's for sure. Yeah, but by the time the hippies the hippie movement was so huge and, and the mainstream was aware of it, the fringe people, you know, the people in the suburbs who weren't aware of the hippie movement at the beginning finally turned into hippies, but they were fake hippies, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They weren't really hippies, they were just growing their hair long and smoking pot every once in a while and talking about peace and love, but they really didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening with the um, supposedly alternative underground music scene right now. And, yep. and it happened in the early 80s with New Wave, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's just a cycle. And that's inevitable, isn't it? Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. But I, I don't know, I just, I, I, I may sound really negative about it, but I, I sincerely think that the generation underneath my our generation, the kids who are around like 15 or even 9 to 12 to to 20 years old, are a bit more aware and a bit more intelligent. I, th I think education is a little bit better right now, and the reason that kids are more educated is because they they choose to be more educated. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that is. I can't explain it, but I just feel like kids right now in their in their teenage years are a lot more aware of things and, and they're and they're a bit more passionate about things they're not as cynical as we were when we were teenagers everybody's trying to sign you know the next nirvana which it's, it's become sort of a ghost in the record industry who will find the next nirvana well the same thing happened in the punk movement when it when it happened in, in the late 70s it's like major record labels are signing punk bands by just shortly after like most punk bands first gigs you know a punk band would start play their first gig you know and they'd be signed to a major label right away you know just because it's a trend right now mm. and that just proves that there are a lot of old school dinosaurs in the record industry still who need to be weeded out and one one positive thing about that is that there are a lot of people our age in our mid-twenties to the thirties who um, who have pretty much the same ideals as we do, who are starting to infiltrate the major label record companies. You know, they're, they're starting to get jobs there. They're, they're getting jobs at MTV. They're getting jobs in all those companies and, and at labels. So eventually the old people will die. You know? Maybe this is the, the white suburban kids who, who want to have their thing that they can relate to as just as much as the black kids could to hip hop and the black music. Yeah. I know, it just seems like especially in like popular culture, things are just like so hazy anymore between the generations. Like rock and roll is even have you even have your own allotted rock band for your generation. Like if you're between forty and fifty years old, you have like Mark Knopfler and Genesis and Elton John and you know and the young kids have like us Sonic Youth or whatever. So it's even but there are a lot of kids there are a lot of kids like in high school who who are listening to the same music as their parents, you know? It's, it's really gross. It's not as bad as it is it was just a few years ago. I remember um, you know, the same kids in high school listening to Bruce Springsteen and so were their parents, you know, there's like no generation gap at all. And I think that there's just starting to get become a generation gap again. Mm -hmm. A lot of that depends on your circumstances too, and how much information you get where you live, mm -hmm. right? In the city, you're more inclined to be into the more hip stuff. You're yeah. out in the rural places. Forget it, you know. But 
I hope you agree with me when I, I think that the future is kind of, you know, looks bright for you, for good music, for good rock. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> well, you never I, know. I think, I think the future looks good for um, good bands with integrity to be exposed, to, to at least have the opportunity to be exposed. But I, I've always felt that, like, every 10 years there's always a handful of really really good bands you know there always has been if i if i would have grown up in the 60s the late 60s i would have only liked a handful of bands i think most of it's bullshit you know like strawberry alarm clock and vanilla fudge and all that stuff is just crap you know but but most of that stuff is looked upon now as being really cool you know mm -hmm. but i only would have liked blue cheer and and, and the stooges you know and Black Sabbath. I can only think of like maybe five bands I would have liked if I would have grown up in those days, you know? And that's the same way it is now. I, I can think of about 10 bands I really, really like. Plus there's so much opportunity for exploitation. I mean, you can look at, you were saying how thank you for bringing rock music back. And a few years back, it was like, you know, rap music. And, and there was a point where rap was underground. Mm -hmm. And it just it took about 10, 12 years for it to become mainstream. And now there's like, you know, Vanilla Ice and um, New Kids on the Block. Right. I mean, just total exploitation. And it yeah, can happen it independent, like, you know? Yeah, and those people are the ones who always reap the benefits, too. Right. You know, right. like, what's that guy's name? Um, why is Fab by Freddy? What's he doing? And Vanilla Ice is a total yeah. millionaire. Yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. The guy that was, oh, I can't remember the name. The guy that, um, I was totally missing my mind. I can't remember who, who it was. <laughs> Maurice Starr. So, some Maurice Starr. Right. Yeah. He, he's the general. He's the uh, New Kids on the Blocks manager. And it right. went to his head so much that he started wearing this like flashy Liberace type general suit mm. around. Like, well, I'm the general. He's a rock. He's a generalissimo. What is he going to do is he's going to take over some third world country with some junta and uh, be CIA funded. And, and you know what? You know who's going to be president? No. It's Donnie from New Kids on the Block. He's going to be a puppet for the CIA no. and, and, and uh, United um, Fruit. And, and then they're all going to gonna commit suicide, right? That's right. In Jonestown type mm. Kool-Aid. Mm. They're going to drink. Let's talk about you for a while. Um, is, it, is it fun to be famous? Uh, not, not if you're walking down the street. Not when people recognize you. Not when you can't have a moment. You can't. The people are waiting in the lobby of your hotel and constantly asking you for your signature, which still baffles me. I don't understand the autograph concept at all, but I figure it's almost a waste of breath to explain to people why you don't want to do it. But, uh, it's stupid. I mean, what is mm. famous? It can be a burden, you know, to be want to be wanting to be famous, kind of vain, really. <laughs> if you think about it, everybody look at me, you know. It's like ah, it'll most pass someday. You know? Most people who are really famous end up staying in their hotel rooms all the time, yeah. total reclusives, and then they, they don't do anything. That sucks. I don't it's a scaring perspective, that. isn't it? I don't want to turn into that kind of a person, but I can understand why Prince is such a, a freak, you know? Because people, people, you know, paw him all the time, you know? And I, I try to walk around in every town and go to record stores and stuff, and I really don't get hassled that much, but it's enough to make me really think about, well, should I go into this record store, you know? And I shouldn't have to even think about stuff like that, but I guess that's fame, you know? And until people's attitudes change about fame and guitar solos and all that kind of stuff, you know, I just have to put up with it. When it comes to your future, there's all sorts of rumors uh, going on about how your next album will sound. Some people say it's going to be really wild, raw and confusing. Some say it's going to be really quiet and acoustic and pretty. How does anyone know? <laughs> do we? Well, yeah, know? where did they get the input information? We're recording our record next month. Did you know that? Are we? Are we going to do it in my basement? Are we going to do it in my basement? Where are we going to do it? Some of it. I'd like to try to do some of it, but I think I'd like to do it reciprocal yeah. and with Steve Albini and Jack and Dino. Not at the same time, but I was thinking maybe we should record like all the songs with Jack and Dino and then all the songs with Steve Albini and then some first. with Barrett. And then, yeah. Wow. And then, um, and then like pick the best of all. So we're gonna do it next month. I'd love to. We have to. It has to be. It has to be, be, it has to be like to pressed right by away. November. See, that's the whole thing. It has to be like on the shelves by November. 
Yeah. Mm. That's, it's not in your contract. No, that's no, just our, that's it is our now. Demand. Damn it. I we'll just sent him this tape. You only have contract for one more record. Is that right? We have Geffen. Oh, no. Yeah. Seven. Six, seven. Six, seven. six or seven. You know, oh, our career. Are you pleased with that company? Yeah, the way they work? Yeah, they're good. They're nice people. Yeah. yeah. It's oh, a major yeah. label. Yeah, I know. Oh, but even, you know, it's just all business type, rock and roll business. I Ties my head in knots, you know. Yeah. It's better to keep your mind off of the business aspect of the whole deal. And just focus on it's gonna grow. Eating. But you have to be aware of it, or, or um, people will start taking advantage of you. You know, you have to check in every once in a while. Lots of people think that you're really wild people, you know, taking shiploads of drugs every day and, you know, wrecking hotel rooms and stuff. I suppose you've, you've met that kind of attitude. Well, I, I think a lot of people have the basic misconceptions, just whatever, the hotel trashing drug doing. It's just cliches. Yeah, it's mean, you know. just stupid. I mean, hey, we're it's, a rock it's band. It's all we're supposed Ever to do drugs, fault. You know? It's all Ever True's fault. You know who he is? Yeah. He's the biggest rock star journalist there is in the whole world right now yeah it's all his fault he, he just he lies about us all the time he's a dick i hate his guts no i'm just kidding that's another chapter the the rock press <laughs> are you, you just had him in a headlock over there <laughs> is he here yeah he's yeah, here he's here oh yeah <laughs> no he's a good friend of ours he's yeah. fine but... But I've heard yeah, you, if you, you don't have a story, you may as well lie about it, right? 